In today's video, we're going to be taking this old, well-loved Sur La Table kitchen table, kitchen table, kitchen towel, and we're going to be recreating it in our new fresh fabrics. Now, this project makes a lovely, lovely hostess gift, um, or really any gift, or even something you could sell at a handmade market. So not only are we going to cover uh, the actual sewing of the kitchen towel, we're also just going to go over how I made this little sleeve that I think makes such a lovely presentation, whether you're giving these as a gift or you're selling them. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Christine, and if you're new here, welcome, welcome. Today's video is I'm really excited for um, because we're gonna be remaking this Sur La Table towel that I love. When I lived in New York, I used to love, love, love popping into their Soho store and perusing the beautiful dishes and um, gadgets and of course their textiles. So I picked this one up somewhere along the way. And one of the things that I love about it is the size. So this finished size, uh, I measured it. It is um, 18 by 28 inches. So it's a, it's a nice large size. The second detail that I really like about this towel is on one of the corners, it has the little hanging loop. And we have like these little uh, hooks kind of close to the, the kitchen area and I'll just hook it on that hook and that way um, I have it to just kind of wipe my hands and, and whatever. So those are the two features that I really, really love. Uh, the other thing I wanna show you about this towel, we're actually gonna improve upon this towel because look at how the corners are finished. So they just sort of did like a fold over and then a fold over and they like top stitched, right? which is fine, it's not terrible, but we're gonna do this a little bit better because what we're gonna do is a really beautiful mitered corner. So let me unwrap these, they're so pretty. So let's see, I think I can probably show you better on the white maybe, maybe the black. Well, let me show you. So we're gonna do these really nice, neat mitered corners and that's how we're going to finish off um, our towel. So really really beautiful and definitely um i don't know about you but i think it's a bit of a uh you know a detail that makes these just even a little bit more fancy than the sur la table ones so here you can see um i've done my little loop on this one so for supplies we're gonna cut our rectangles 20 inches by 30 inches so i bought a, a half of a meter and that was just enough and just enough for two towels so 20 inches by 30 inches is how big we're going to cut our rectangle. The other thing that you'll need, if you wanna do that little corner loop, is you'll need some uh, like twill tape. This is just like kind of a soft cotton uh, tape. I think that I also had a narrower, narrower one, um, which I don't know where it is. So anywhere from like a quarter inch wide tape to like this one was just about a quarter inch. It feels a little small to me. Um, this one is like, uh, I would say this is three quarters of an inch. It feels a little big. So I would probably try to find like a half of an inch wide twill tape if I were you. Um, but we'll need just a little, little section, maybe about six inches or so for the hook. So that's pretty much it for supplies. So the first thing we need to do is just cut as many of these towels as you want at 20 inches by 30 inches. And of course, you can make your towels any size you'd like. It's not gonna change the sewing of these towels at all, um, but I am really just wanting to duplicate my favorite towel, which so to do that, we're gonna cut 20 by 30 inch rectangles.
So now that we have our towel cut to the size we need, we are going to head to the ironing board and press up a half of an inch on all of the edges. Uh, so this is gonna get us started on our perfect miter corners, which make this towel so luxe and beautiful. So I'll meet you over at my ironing board. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is just give this fabric a good press. There's a few places here that have um, a few fold lines. So we're just gonna give this a really nice press. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is just fold up a half of an inch all along all of the edges. So you can definitely use a measuring tape or a seam gauge to measure. I like to just kind of measure my first, uh, you know, my first starting point and then just kind of eyeball it from there. And every once in a while, maybe I'll just kind of check and make sure I'm still, still at a half of an inch, but we're gonna work our way all the way around the four edges of our towel. Okay, and now as we get to our first corner, I'm just going to continue folding all the way down like this. And then you might wonder, how should we do this corner? Should we um, open it out or should we just fold over? And all we're gonna do, we just take this one all the way down and then this corner, we're just going to fold up right over it. So this is, uh, let's see if we can get a better, better look. So I'm just literally folded that. And then as I fold up this corner, I'm just folding it right up, right over. Because it's messy now, but we're going to do our mitered corner and this is not gonna be messy anymore. So for the time being, we're just folding it over, over itself. Okay, now that we have all four of our corners pressed up the first time, now what we're going to do is press up again. So do a double press. Exactly the same way we did on our first round. We're just going to press it up again. Same technique on the corners. Just fold it right up, right over itself. And again, don't worry, we're gonna be doing a nice and tidy mitered corners, so these are going to be really nice and neat once we're done here. Okay, now we're going to get our mitered corners ready to sew, and how we're going to do this is take our towel and we're going to fold this edge to this edge. So let's fold it into a triangle. It doesn't matter which edge you start with. And I actually have this unfolded. So this is how we ironed it in. I've just unfolded it one, one time and fold that right back on itself, lining up my folded edge there. And this is right sides together. So here I have my corner and these edges are lined up nicely. And then I can kind of smooth this out. And now what I'm gonna do is draw in a line. The easiest way to mark this in is if you have a gridded ruler like I have here. Um, otherwise, you're just, what we're doing is marking in a perpendicular line here to where our fabric is folded. So all I'm going to do is line this right up. You can see my line is just lined right up there and right to the edge of my fold there. So this little fold is actually a triangle. And so that is where I'm going to draw my line. I have some white chalk, which I probably am not going to be able to see on this. Um, so what actually happens is I rarely ever mark these. So this is something once you do it once, you know exactly um, the, the place where you need to sew and you can just sew it on your sewing machine. We're gonna sew right from here to here and that's going to then give us our mitered corner. I find that if I just fold the fabric right sides together, line it up, I can um, eyeball enough of a, a line there that it works perfectly. So now I'm gonna go to the machine. We're gonna do all four of these corners so you can see exactly how I do it. Okay, so here we are at my sewing machine. I have threaded my machine with black thread, which will look nicely with this print. 
and I'm just going to drop down the stitch length. I'm set for a straight stitch. Normally I sew on a 2.5. I'm just gonna drop this down to two. Because I'm working in a small area, I think the two for my stitch length is just a little bit of a finer stitch. So I'm circling back to exactly how we set up our towel before matching these folded edges here and smoothing this part out. And I do have my marking here right on this miter, so I'm going to uh, just place my presser foot down and I'm gonna try to sew right along that miter there. I'm going to back stitch at the start and then I'll back stitch right on the folded edge there, couple stitches. trim. Now you can see my stitching right there so uh, just as a triangle before we trim this excess I like to just flip this over and just make sure that everything is as it should be. So now that I have this miter here I have just a little bit of extra room so once I fold this over you can see I have like just a little bit of extra. So what I'm gonna do is go back and I'm gonna sew this again. And I'm going to actually angle this. Um, I'm gonna start from the same point here and angle it just a little bit more that way. Um, and this is, it happens on the first couple times until we get the miter perfect. But I find once I do this once and kind of get my angle correct, then all of the others kind of I can eyeball more exact. So I'm just sewing in a new line. And I'll show you this here. So you can see I've just, this is my new line, the line that's closest to my thumb there. Uh, so I've just gone in and made it a little bit more slanted. And then as I turn this to the wrong side, it fits nice and snug. It's really nice and flat and snug. So that's the angle that I'm gonna use. Um, you know, this is, I just, I didn't quite have it um, perfectly angled and with the chalk, it's hard to get it exact. So that's just kind of a little fiddly, but now on my others, I'm gonna know the angle. So then I will just trim right there. So trimming just about an eighth of an inch or a uh, quarter of an inch there to reduce the bulk. And then again, we can just turn this. Um, and I will show you how I turn these corners. This one's pretty good so far, uh, but I do have a point turner that will do. But this, oh, it just lays so beautifully, so nice and flat there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on all the other corners. So just opening it out so there's only one fold. So fold, fold, and then folding this right sides together. match these edges here and then I kind of just go like that and smooth it out and now I'm going to sew from here just at a at the same angle that I sewed the other one at Okay, so my all four my, of my miters are sewn in. Now I'm going to meet you at the ironing board and we're going to make sure these corners are nice and crisp and give it one uh, final press before we top stitch this down. So first I'm going to first trim that uh, seam allowance there to about uh, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, flip it over, and then I'm just using my point turner just to give it a nice, sharp, sharp, sharp point there. And then we'll continue on. I just do the trim and then turn it like that. Ooh, that is a beautiful, beautiful corner. Now, we already have this pressed up once, 
uh, but it's nice to just go back and press out our corners, kind of repress in this second fold that we pressed in. And so it's nice, nice and crisp and firm. So now I have my towel all final pressed and ready to top stitch. But first I wanted to take another look at one of the details I love about this Sir La Taube towel and that is the little hanger, um, hanger loop on one of the corners. So this is placed, this is just about two inches from the edge in two inches here. So I'm going to roughly place mine in the same spot. So I have my little bit of twill tape and I'm just going to place this. I'll kind of use my cutting board here for the two inch um, place. And again, I don't think this really has to be exact. Um, I probably want it down. A little. I probably want it about there actually. So that's where I'm going to put it. This is actually one, two, three, one, two, three inches down. And then I'll just cut a length here like so. And then what I'll do, let me just trim this edge as well. And then all I'm going to do is just slide this under, maybe about there. And I'll do a couple quick pins just to hold this in place like that. Oh dear. There. Okay, so now we're ready to top stitch. So what I'm gonna do from, I like to top stitch from the wrong side of my towel so that I can get it right along the edge. You could top stitch from the top side of your fabric if you wanted because these edges are a nice even half of an inch, but I find it just a little bit more easy, pleasing to do it from the wrong side. So I'm just going to go around all four edges and top stitch, top stitch this down. And as I do, I'll catch this loop and that will secure it into place. And this is also where if you have a personalized label, you could very easily just slide it underneath your uh, your folded under edge and also catch it in your top stitching. So I don't have any fancy labels for this towel, um, but it would be such a beautiful little touch to have a, a, your own label there. So let's head to the machine and get this top stitched. So I'm going to increase the stitch length uh, to a 2.5 now. So just a, a, nice, uh, a nice top stitch. The other setting that I'm going to do is set with my needle in the auto down position. And this is going to help us as we go around some of the corners. And I'm going to be top stitching just about an eighth of an inch from the folded edge. side we just have a nice subtle row of top stitching we have our hanging side our hanging loop there nice and strong all of our miters are really beautiful and our towel is done now that our towels are done we can focus on working on making these little labels so we are going to make these strips that we then cut up and tape into a little wrap. So I've actually printed these on just regular lightweight paper, but I'd love to print them on a heavier weight paper. I think that that would be a really nice touch. So let's hop to the computer. I'm going to share my screen and show you exactly how I made these. Okay, so we are going to be using a platform called Canva. So you wanna to go to canva.com. It's free to use. I do actually have a paid account. Um, really the only thing with the paid is you can save things with a transparent background, which we're not gonna to need to do for this project. So canva.com, sign up for account if, an account if you don't already have one, and it's free to use. So I'm gonna show you how I created um, these sleeves. So the first thing that you wanna do is go to start a new project. 
and we are working with an eight and a half by 11 canvas. So I actually did the width at 11 and then the height at 8.5, which is what gives me this, um, you know, the long way is the way that we want our wrap to be on. So 11 by eight and a half is the size of my canvas. So this is what my final one looked like. And this is the one I printed because you can see I have some guidelines in here. So I'm going to start a new canvas. So if you do a new project, this is what you're going to see. So then what I did was just come over here to elements. So here on the left hand side are going to be, um, you know, kind of like your menu almost if you're not familiar with Canva. So what I did, I went into elements and I just did a search and I searched for black and white seamless. Seamless is the name of the pattern that um, that I have in this background. So these roses there. So you can scroll. I love um, this one I think is really cool. And so you can drop it onto your canvas and then drag it using the little arrows to fit your canvas. So this one's kind of cool. Um, we can see who I love. I love the polka dots. That's really cute as well. Um, so you can just kind of play, just um, go through and kind of click through. This is really cute. Um, those are not going to print right, though. Um, this one is really cool. So yeah, just you can pop through, choose your background. And then what we're going to do is go into elements and we will drop in a shape, so a square shape. So I just... Um, choose my square and I click on it and it should add it to there we go so it adds it as brown I'm gonna let's just work with it in brown for the moment um, so then I will just highlight the square and I'm gonna drag it and as I'm dragging can you see the little black pop up there right now it says width 3.9 height 3.9 and so that's giving me my inches so let's just see how big I made these and we're just going to copy it. So these were 2.9 by 2.2. So let's make this one the same 2.9 by 2.2. So I think it was like this, like this, and then 2.9. Okay, so that's the size of our square. So now I'm going to place this right uh, pretty much in the center. So see the guidelines will kind of snap. Um, so I think it was just about there. Now with it highlighted like it is, I'm going to do Command C and then Command V and I'm going to make a copy of it. And I'm just going to drag my second one right into the middle of my canvas, which is right there. Um, so I'm always using those guidelines. I'm going to copy it again and drag the third one right about there. So I'm just kind of eyeballing the distance to get them, um, you know, equal distance between. And then I don't, I don't necessarily want to print with this color. So I'm just going to change all of these to white. Oops. And that way um, it's just going to print as white paper. And then um, we can go here to text. And I like to kind of choose one of these. Like, I think I might have even used this one. Um, so this is really large. So we can just kind of drag it down. And we're going to do the first one. And then everything else, we're just going to we're going to copy. So um, we can. Let's see, we said kitchen towels, probably going to make this font smaller. So kitchen towels. So right up here is where you can change the size. So I'm just going to, there we go, about 26 um, font size. And then on this little part, I think I put machine, wash, cold, um, tumble dry, like your care instructions. And then 100% cotton, we could put here. I think I did kind of a script font for my cotton, um, but I actually love the way that looks. I think that's really modern. Um, and I love it with the polka dots. So I'm gonna just highlight this. And now these three, 
See how they're kind of all selected? It's because they're a group. Because we chose it from over here from this font combinations. So all I have to do is do Command C and Command V and I get a copy. And then I can just drag it onto here and I'll copy it again and then drag it here. So, and I'll, I'll try to center it. It's kind of hard to see. So there is the, the base. Um, so now what I did in order, because what I really wanted was this little section that says handmade for you with love. Um, and you could put anything on the back. I was even thinking like, if you were going to sell these at a store, they could put like the little um, like price sticker on it or something like that. So what I did was um, I used these bars to figure out the sizes. So let me show you how I did this. So I just went over to elements and I grabbed this square, just like we used before. Um, and then what I did, I just made it into like a little bar and I dragged it, oops, drag it right into the bottom here. And let's see, oh, it's going to be too big still. Um, so I'm going to just, there we go. I had to make it taller until these side things came up. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to make it five inches wide. And why am I doing five inches? Because, so this is eight and a half by 11 inches, this paper. So our, it's 11 inches across. So I'm going to leave a half of an inch on either side for the overlap of the, um, where I'm going to tape this together on the back. So I want half an inch on each side, which is an inch. So that leaves me 10 inches to work with. So five inches is going to be the front of my, um, my sleeve. So literally from, you know, here to here is five inches. And then this is five inches with half of an inch seam, basically. So this is kind of like sewing. So I'm putting my, um, I've dragged this until you can see it's there, it's five inches. And then I've dropped it right into the center of my canvas. You see the, the line that pops up, so I'm centered. So this is gonna be the front of my towel. And then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drag it back small. So then um, we know that this part is the back and this part is the back, but I kind of want to know what is the center of this area. So I am going to copy our five inch thing. And first I'm going to go up here and change its color. So let's change it to pink. And we're going to, um, let's just move it right there. Oh, we have to make it larger again, there we go. So let's make this 5.5 inches. So I'll drag it until it hits 5.5, there we go. And then um, I will then from here, drag it until it's five, there we go. And then so we know this is a half of an inch and then I'll drag this down again. And yeah, then what we can do is just position this into the back. So now what we can see is this is half of our back. And so we can do that same thing on the other side. I'm we don't actually need to because I'm just going to put our little thing here. So we'll go back to the square. Oops. Put another square in. And let's move it over. And I want it centered on my back. So that's going to be about there. And then I'm going to make it about that wide. And there we go. So that's centered. I'm kind of eyeballing it to center it in this pink area and centering it to this. So I think that looks good. It obviously doesn't have to be perfect. So you can make this as large as you want, as small as you want. Um, I'm going to then just go up here and change its color. So we'll change it to white so nothing really prints. And then we'll go to, actually, we're just going to take this little text, um, well, no, we'll do a new text. So go to text and then we go to this little one. We'll just do a little bit of body text and then I can just drag this here um, and we're gonna make this a lot smaller. Um, yeah, about there. And I'll try to center it within my white box there 
And then I'm going to change it to say um, made for you by hand with love. Um, and I'm going to change this font. I want it to be Playfair display. So let's go here and we'll change the font. It's still just a little bit big. Um, so let's change the size. There we go. Um, so I think, I think it could move over just a little bit there. I think I might actually want to make this just a hair bigger. And then there we go. There. Okay. So then that's how it's going to print. So that little handmade for you is just going to be right on the back. And so now we can just take this. Um, I'm going to select them both. So I just hit the shift key and I'll do um, command C, command V, copy it and just drop it in there. And then command C, command V and drag it there. So, okay. So there we go. And um, before I get ready to print this, I am um, obviously going to delete out our guidelines here. And now this is ready to print on your eight and a half by 11 paper. And I love it. It looks so good, doesn't it? Once you have your design all how you'd like it, you can print. And this is how mine looks um, once I've had it printed. So I have three lines here and these are the, you know, the back little message. So now what I'm gonna do is I have an old rotary cutter with a dull blade. And so I'm just gonna, um, use my rotary cutter to trim these into three separate sleeves. If you have a paper cutter, you could definitely use a paper cutter as well, or just your scissors. Um, this rotary cutter just came in handy though for, um, for trimming this paper. And then I'm just going to take one of my labels. I've already kind of um, tested it. So I just lay it uh, centered and then I just flip this over and then kind of bring these to the center where they match. Now, if I had a fancy little clear circle sticker, that would be beautiful. I don't, so I'm just gonna use a bit of scotch tape and just tape right there. And then voila, we have a beautiful presentation of our towels. And as you flip it over, we have the handmade with love right there. And this is a really beautiful gift. So there you have a beautiful, easy to make hostess gift or just a gift for yourself. These are definitely coming home with me tonight and I'm gonna really enjoy having them, having some new fresh towels in my kitchen. So if you're not already receiving my weekly email, there is a link below to, just, to subscribe. Um, I send just a weekly email with any sewing tips and links to these videos so you um, stay in the loop about new projects. And so I'll see you next time. All right, bye. <laughs>